Oh hi there, I'm Gav, welcome to the Slow Mo Guys. Today we'll be using slow motion to learn how a film camera works. A film camera for movies, not for stills. This is a 16 millimeter film camera, it's Russian. It's called a Krasnogorsk 3, which I definitely just read and didn't have to Google how to pronounce it. We'll be loading up with some 16 millimeter film and using the Phantom to show all its magic. Imagery is usually captured onto film through a lens with a photosensitive chemical reaction. You can see that the light hitting this film has darkened it. It's a color negative film, so areas of very bright light will burn in a dark image and that'll then be flipped in the development process. And you can see here the area I left behind is slowly darkening as light from the room exposes it. And I can just speed that up here. If you were then to develop that, you'd end up with something that looks like this. First thing I'm gonna do is load this bad boy with some film. So I'm gonna turn the frame rate down to very low, uh, eight frames a second. Put a little bit of tension in the old spring. It's a wind-up camera. This pressure plate comes out. <laughs> this camera has single perf reels, so that's the type of film I'm gonna put in. It, it basically just means the sprocket holds down only one side of the film and you can fit either sound or use a format called Super 16 and shoot a wider image if your camera has a wider gate. So that's the type of film we've got here, just a single perf 16 millimeter film. Even though the image size is different between these two formats, the width of the film itself is indeed 16 millimeters. Okay, this is now loaded. The film's on this one. It's gonna be taken up by this one. So it'll all end up here and it's looped through, going through here. This pressure plate is keeping the film flat against the, the focal plane. And uh, when running, it looks something like this. You would never want to usually load a film camera in such a bright room. Next thing to do is to pop this back on. A lot of people would also tape around to prevent light leakage. Now that we're loaded up with film, we can set the frame rate. So we'll do 24, which is the standard recording frame rate of film. This camera will actually go all the way up to 48. Okay, lens is off. I will now use a camera to film me using a camera to film a camera. Here's a selfie I took on a camera of me using a camera to film me using... All right, I've just realized I can actually take more of this off to show more. There we go. As we learned with our slow-mo DSLR video, a 45 degree mirror will let you look through the lens. The mirror will then move out of the way, revealing the shutter doors, which also move out of the way, and the image will be exposed on the sensor. Then the shutter closes, then the mirror comes back down. With this film camera, it's a very similar principle. When you look through the viewfinder, you get the correct perspective because you're looking through the actual lens. This is done by bouncing the image off these beam splitting mirrors and off this mirrored disc placed at 45 degrees, very similar to the stills camera. What you're seeing here isn't the film plane, it's actually a path back to the viewfinder on the back. This system differs slightly from the DSLR in that this mirror doesn't move out of the way to reveal a shutter that then opens to reveal the film plane. This mirror is the shutter itself. This is a rotary disc shutter and this is how it works. This camera is rolling at 24 frames a second and the gap in the shutter disc determines the shutter speed. For every half rotation of this disc, which is one frame, the film is exposed for 1 60th of a second and that is determined by the, the size of the gap in the shutter there. This is what you would see if you were looking through the viewfinder at me pouring water on the ground. If you could also see in slow motion, this is what it would look like. You can see here side by side that the areas of darkness in the viewfinder are actually the exposures on the film. You cannot see through the viewfinder when light is hitting the film itself. So you're basically seeing the opposite cycles. This is what it looks like from the inside as film is being dragged through the gate. You may remember that any movement in your subject while the shutter is open will cause motion blur, but a DSLR sensor is stationary. If film is constantly moving, how do you avoid every single frame being a complete blur as the film is pulled through the camera? To show you how this clever part works, I'm gonna write numbers on each frame. This is one second of film at 24 frames a second. And we're gonna run this through the camera so we can see what's actually happening with the film. All the slow-mo in this video is being captured at 1,000 frames a second in 4K, which is approximately 40 times slower. Here we go, one second through the camera. This is some absolutely amazing engineering here. Every single exposure on every frame of film, the film is perfectly stationary. And by the time the shutter comes around for a new exposure, the film has moved without us even seeing to the next frame. 
in order to see how this works, I'm going to take the disc off entirely so you can now see the film at all times. Without the shutter, you can see when the film moves. The whole mechanism is timed so perfectly that as the shutter covers the film, the film is moved down, which prevents any streaking or motion blur from the film itself. If I superimpose the shutter back on, you can see it only moves when it's under the mirror. This is so fascinating to me. And because the shutter and the film pull-down speed are linked, no matter what frame rate you shoot, this will always be the case. So now I want to see the mechanism that is pulling the film down every time. And in order to get a better view of that, I'm going to take off this piece, which should reveal the pull-down claw. This lens makes everything look ginormous. So you can see as I press record here, this mechanism in the middle is leaning forward at the top of its cycle. And as it leans forward, this claw goes perfectly into the sprocket holes of the film, pulling it down into the perfect position for each exposure. I'm very impressed this camera still works, honestly. It started production in 1971, so that's a lot of moving parts that you're asking to last half a century at this point. Just for the heck of it now, I'm going to write frame numbers on again, but this time for a second's worth of film at 48 frames a second. So everything in the camera will be working at double the speed now. If you projected this back at 24 frames a second, you would get half speed slow motion, or if you projected it back at 48 frames a second, you'd get some very hobbity looking footage. And there we have it, a wonderful slow-mo look at some old school analog tech. I love it. Did you know that there were film cameras made that could shoot thousands of frames a second? Maybe we should take a look at one of those one of these days. If you found that video interesting, make sure you subscribe. I hope you did. I enjoyed making it. Uh, give it a like if you want, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.